I believe that you will be blessed as you listen to the word today. Hallelujah. So can we welcome our minister, Dr. Uche, for the word. Let's put our hands together for the Father. Hallelujah. Are we all blessed? Yeah. Amen. Are we all blessed in this house today? All right. So it's a blessing to be in the house of the Most High, uh, for our God is good. Also, I want to also thank everyone who is here for, with us for the first time, our visitors who are here today, especially for baby dedication. All right. You're all welcome. Eh? My brothers and my sisters here. Yeah. You're all welcome. Hallelujah. All right, uh, let us quickly, let us pray, first of all. Father, we just want to bless you. We bless you for life. We bless you for your goodness. And we bless you for your mercies. Father, you said that as many that thirst for your waters, that we'll be filled and that we will not thirst anymore. We come this day, Father, in unity, in oneness of heart for your water of life, your water of truth, your water of righteousness. Fill every vessel in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, every reproach in our lives, Father, we look unto you that you will purify us, sanctify us, and bring us into all your newness to give you glory, honor, and adoration in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha, Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome once again. Uh, thank you again, uh, Pastor Reich, for another time to uh, share the word in the house of uh, the Transformation Assembly. All right, so let's quickly go to the book of Psalm, verse 20, chapter 27. Book of Psalm, chapter 27. So we're going to read the first five verses. All right, it's a very popular verse. Psalm 27. You there? Okay, very quick. <laughs> all right, so I, I will read, all right. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies, my foes, they all stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the, the, this psalm interests me a lot because of the writer himself, David. All right? Who was the first king of Israel? Who was the first king? Saul? Any other answer? Man? Who was the first king? Okay, the first king of Israel was God himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was the first king. Okay, the people demanded for another king. They wanted a king like the men that they were seen around. And out of their own hearts, what they desired was what they received. All right, now there was this striking difference between Saul and David. Very, you know, it's so obvious about the both of them. Saul sought after his own glory. 
He sought after his own glory. David did not seek his glory. David sought the glory of the Father. When he went to fight Goliath, he didn't say in my name. He didn't say with my power. He didn't say because I have, I'm an expert here as a shepherd. He didn't say because I fought a bear that I would bring him down. He went by the name of the Lord. That's why when we're singing that song, that no other name. It says every knee will bow at the mention of his name. Every tongue will confess that he is our God. So David trusted in the name of God. Do you trust in his name? Do you trust? Because a writer like this is speaking out of experience. This is a warrior. A warrior that they sang praises of him for how many people he had slain in the battlefield. But yet, he says, the Lord is my what? Light and is my salvation. He then says, the Lord is my strength. Not claiming any strength of his own. Sometimes I say, God, give us a heart like that of David. Saul tried to, uh, what would I say? He tried to, he, he, you know, he, he was waiting somewhere for Sa uh, Samuel to come for a sacrifice. So he felt, you know, he was good enough. After all, I'm the king. After all, I'm the person that was chosen. The Holy Spirit is upon me. And he went out of order. But not just out of order, it was his heart. He was looking for the glory. And he gave a sacrifice that immediately that day he was rejected. He didn't stop there. Saul didn't stop there. He was told, slay the people of Amalek. But Saul was still seeking his own glory. Preserve the fattest cows. Preserve the king so that he can show off that it is his might. But he was rejected that day. May we none of us be rejected in the mighty name of Jesus. May we not get in anything that will go against his entire word. But you see, David was different. David understood the truth. David understood the truth. David sought after the truth. David called on the truth. In fact, he says, he spoke unto the Lord. He says, he says unto the Lord that uh, out of my, you know, he spoke about the, the Messiah himself. Saying that he is his own salvation. Speaking of the Messiah as his own salvation. Even though he read, uh, gave Psalm 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't claim himself as being a shepherd. Hallelujah. David still could have been out of line. But you see something he did. There was a tabernacle of Moses that was standing in Gibeon. The Ark of Covenant was in someone's house for 20 years. Ark of Covenant, that wherever the ark is, the Father is there. The mercy seat was on that ark of covenant. So that ark was in the house of Abinadab. But then what did David do? He demanded for that ark to be brought out of this house. He didn't take it to the tabernacle of David, of Moses. David set up another tabernacle. In Jerusalem. In fact, one would say it's enough for him to be struck. But David understood the heart of God. Because... The tabernacle was coming to Jerusalem. David understood. David sought after the glory of God. So here he's saying, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who is our light? The Bible says in John chapter 8, there was a woman who was brought in the temple after Jesus Christ had finished preaching. This woman was brought in and they said she had committed adultery. What say you, O oh teacher? What should we do to this woman? They came to test Jesus Christ. But what did he say? He says, if you are without sin, please cast the first stone. They were all convicted at that point in time. At his word, everyone was convicted. And they all dropped their stones and walked away. One of the questions I, I think about is, how many people committed the adultery? 
Was it only the woman? Can a woman commit adultery alone? So she committed the adultery with somebody else. Why didn't they bring the man? Eh? Why did they bring the man? But because they were trying to test him. But at the end of the day, he responded. But then he, the woman came to him to give thanks. And he asked her, he says, where are your accusers? And she said, you know, there's none of them anymore. They've gone. Then he didn't stop there because many times people will like to stop there. But he says, go and sin no more. Then he spoke to the entire congregation and said that um, he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. Anyone who follows him shall not dwell in darkness. So David was seeing the Messiah, calling him the light. Because Christ is the express image of God. So he came down and David says, the Lord is my light. And then Christ comes and says, he is the light. A confirmation or a fulfillment of the prophecy. A fulfillment of the word. A fulfillment even of what the law is saying. Hallelujah. But then Jesus didn't stop there. While he spoke in Matthew chapter 5, what people call the Beatitudes. Hallelujah. While he spoke to the people, he talked about those who are merciful who obtain mercy. Those who are poor in spirit, that they will be, all right, called children of God, of the kingdom. All right? He says those um, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Hallelujah. So after doing all that, he spoke to the same people and said something very, very interesting. He says, you now, as many that believe, are the salt of the earth. But then he then called them the light of the world. That we have become the light of the world. As many that have Christ in them, the spirit of the Messiah in us, we have become the light of the world. And then he asked the question, if you have a light, will you hide it? Would you put it on at the table? These lights that are on here is for us to see who is here, all right? We don't take the bulbs and hide them somewhere under somewhere else, like they do in the nightclub. The lights are hidden. Hallelujah. Okay? The lights are hidden there because it's darkness. They're hiding what they're doing. But it is made obvious so that you see that's why the light is out here. He says, you have become that light. Why? Because the light is in you. So if the light is in you, why do you cover the light? Why do you shade the light? Why do you hide the light? Why are you coward? Oh, no, what well, we say? Be ashamed of the light. I wanted to use the word being a coward, but no. I would say maybe sometimes we have shame of carrying being the light. I remember when I was much younger, I used to be ashamed of carrying the Bible, walking on the road. You see, right? Or even black nylon bag. <laughs> hide the Bible. You're going for fellowship. You hide the Bible. You don't want people to see where you're going to. The day that shocked me while I, I began to, my mind began to change, was when I went to a friend's house. He's a Muslim. And all of a sudden, while we were there together, preparing, you know, eating, and all of a sudden, he says, I'm sorry, we have to stop what we are doing. He's going for prayers. Brought out a mat in front of us with his family, and they started bowing down and began to pray. And I looked, and I shook my head. And I said, I should be ashamed of myself. So we should not hide who we are or, who, or whom we have in us. Do not hide Christ. Speak of him. He says, you shall bear witness of him. Hallelujah. You shall bear witness of him. And may we do so in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's see something about this light. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. The book of Ephesians chapter 5. The book of Ephesians chapter 5. Do we have it up? Okay. Not yet. Now 
So I'll read from verse 8. All right, Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 8 to 14. Are we ready? Are we all there? So he says this, for you were once what? Darkness, but now you are what? In who? Walk as children of what? Hallelujah. He says, walk as children of light. Now read verse 9 again. For the fruit of the what? Spirit. Some of the versions will say light, but fruit of the Spirit is in all what? And what? And truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. He says then, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of what? But rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, even while if you're here sleeping. Awake, you who sleep, arise from the word, and Christ will give you light. So we see from the beginning here, it says we should shine that light. But it says the fruit of the light is in goodness, is in righteousness, is in truth. Now, the core of this whole thing is truth. And that's why the message here today is upholding the truth in trying times. Upholding the truth in trying times. Now, truth is the core of what he's talking about. Because righteousness without truth is not righteousness. Goodness without truth is not the goodness of the word. Hallelujah. The only way you can expose falsehood or lies is by truth. The unfruitful works of darkness can only be exposed by truth. Without truth, you can't expose anything. And that is why truth is what people go after. They're looking for some kind of truth. I looked at uh, how they define truth. Truth is defined as an evidence or affirmation of uh, a fact. Evidence of a fact. Or evidence of a, a belief. Evidence of uh, something that they feel is sure. Hallelujah. Evidence of what is sure. Right, so I could use an example. What color is this? So, is, there's a fact here that it is red. So, it is truth when I say it is, it is red. So, same thing with the white. I can easily say it is white because it is clear. It's obvious that it is white. Hallelujah. But then, you see, in the world, the definition of truth is conditional. Why? Fact. No one is sure of fact. A simple fact like this, can, you can get the truth. Okay? I'll give you an example. We have a lawyer here, right? Some cases, you can have someone commit murder. In one country, he might spend three years in prison. In another place, he will spend life imprisonment. In China, wow, boom, death sentence. It varies. It's conditional with place. It's conditional with uh, national law. So, without a fact, you can't really get the truth. Hallelujah. There was a case, uh, I think a couple of years ago, there was a young man in France. A child was hanging from the balcony. He was about to fall off from the balcony. So there was this francophone, strong African man. In fact, people call this Spider Man. In fact, people were still trying to climb fence. This guy had gone, boom, climbed the fence, began to climb this building. In fact, I was amazed. I said, ah. I said, I said too much, well, too much. African power. Ah. So as the guy began to climb, he climbed to the top, saved this child, brought the child down, gave to the family. 
The whole nation applauded that guy. Europe applauded the guy. Africa applauded the guy. Everywhere they applauded this man. And at the end of the day, they found out that the man was an illegal immigrant. It's true. So, but he was an illegal immigrant. At the end of the day, I think it was uh, Macron that was... Yes, so Macron, they gave him, they gave him a paper. Say, you're yeah, welcome. People, the French people are saying, if this kind of person can be our citizen, no problem. No problem. In case this thing happens, we have Superman. So, <laughs> now one recent case. A man, he saw, I don't know which country that was. He saw money that was missing. Maybe like 20 or 30,000 US dollars. He saw the money, brought the money, and came to return it. He has done a great thing. It's not the same thing. Similar. He brought so much money, came to return it. And when the police, they met him, they were happy. They said, thank you so much. You have done very well. You are a great citizen. The same thing is uh, also an African. It's our brother. It's our brother. And they now found out that, again, he was an illegal immigrant. So, after they finished, what you expect at the end of the day, at least they will do something similar. They deported that guy. <laughs> They deported that guy immediately. Say, what? You don't get paper? They sent him back to where he was from. So uh, he tried to walk in that truth, but it didn't work out for him. So truth in the world is conditional. Truth in the world is conditional. But the truth we have in the Messiah, the Bible says, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no one that can go to the Father except through him. No one has stood on earth to come and stand to say he is the truth. He did it. And we are sure he is the truth. Hallelujah. He says he is the truth and we believe that he is the truth. But the thing you have to understand with the truth is that the truth cannot be changed. The truth cannot be altered. You cannot add to truth. You cannot subtract from the truth. You cannot modify the truth. You cannot transform the truth. The truth is perfect. The truth is holy. The truth is pure. You cannot help the truth. The truth is complete. You cannot even bring down the truth from where the truth is. The truth remains the truth. Until you come to understand the truth, the Bible says we will still be in captivity. Because the truth will do what? Set you free. The truth is what sets one free. Without the truth, we are held in bondage. We are held in bondage. But we thank the Father for the truth in Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The key thing here is outside the truth, anything outside the truth is a lie. Anything outside the truth is a lie. Because you cannot change it. You cannot modify the truth. Since the truth is perfect, anything outside the truth is what? Is a lie. It's false. Hallelujah. You can keep modifying falsehood. It will still be falsehood. It will remain as falsehood. It will remain a lie. Unless you come into the truth. Hallelujah. Now, it would interest every, all of, every one of us. We all know Satan's greatest weapon. Satan's most powerful weapon that you can think of is actually a lie. It's all lie. The only, the main weapon he uses is lies. Right from the beginning in the garden, he started with what? Lies. That he is called the father of lies. He continues in lies. In fact, the Bible says there is no truth in him. Because there is no truth in him, right from the abundance of the heart, so what the mouth will speak. So that's why Satan, every word that comes out of Satan is all what? Lies. Satan can never give you anything that is true. 
Many people have given up their soul or they've gone to say, oh, they've given up their soul to Satan. They're deceiving themselves. They don't know what they're saying. Because he can't even take the soul. The soul belongs to the Most High. Hallelujah. The soul belongs to the Most High. So they give up to him and they say, let him give them substances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He spoke about, he spoke lies concerning Job. When he encountered the truth, whom is Jesus? In Matthew chapter 4, what happened? He started with, if you are hungry, since you are hungry, change the stone to what? Of course, the Messiah was hungry. He could, if he, of course, the Messiah could change it to bread. But because the word was coming from Satan, he says, he responded with the truth. And the truth is that you shall not live by bread alone. Tell your neighbor, you shall not live by bread alone. Live by the bread of the living God. Hallelujah. He says, uh, that he took him up the, uh, the top of the temple and began to, on the mountains, and began to tell him, jump, kill yourself, throw yourself to die. The angels will keep charge over you. That's, the truth is that that is a scripture in the Bible, Psalm 91. The most powerful, everybody likes to quote Psalm 91. If you're in Nigeria, before you enter transport to travel, you quote Psalm 91. You have to quote it. You have to pray that prayer. Psalm 91. Ah, Father, ah, you protect me in this journey. You are the shadow over me. You are this. You have to pray that prayer. Because, uh, as, and when you land, <laughs> you will give thanks. Hallelujah. So what is he saying in this place? He came and spoke a word that you should jump. And that if he jumps, that what will happen? The angels will catch him, will help him. But because the word was still coming from the enemy. Now, you see what the enemy does. Bless his mouth. <laughs> you see what the enemy does with the word. He cannot twist the word. You can't change the word. The word is perfect. It's pure. The Bible says the law is true. It says the word is true. It is perfect. David confirmed. It says the whole of the scripture is perfect. So what he tried to do was... A lie. Try and deceive. He says, jump. So that they will catch you. So you see, what is done is, people tend to look for errors in the Bible. Errors in the word of God to justify their unrighteousness. They look for errors in scripture to justify their unrighteousness. For example, I, have a, I want to have a second wife. Why? Abraham had more than one wife. After all, Jacob, whom we are looking up to, Jacob had four wives. Since Jacob had four wives, I can have four wives. So they like try to use, try to use the scripture to justify unrighteousness. That's a dangerous thing to do. Very dangerous. Because you are using his name even in vain. Hallelujah. Another thing that is often done with um, the word. Of course, they look for the lies inside, try to use the word to justify unrighteousness, look for errors in scripture, but the Bible says that the word is perfect, is entirely perfect. So, what then does he do? Satan lies completely. Everything concerning our lives, even when we are, uh, even today, Satan still tries to propel lies against the children of God. All right, there, there was, I, I had a situation where, you know, it was like I had an encounter with him. And it literally reminded me of something you did 25 years ago. 25 years ago, and then you are saved. So my response immediately was by the word. And it was, he says... There is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Who walk not by after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we have to know the word to overcome a lie. 
Because if not, we will fall for the lie. Hallelujah. Satan lies even concerning the lives of people. Concerning health, he lies. He lies concerning families. He lies concerning the saints. Everything he does, everywhere you see the word of Satan in the Bible, anything he spoke was just lies. So automatically, you know his weapon. The Bible says, uh, we are not, you know, that we are aware of the enterprises of the wicked. We must be made known that this is what he does. So even today, what is really, to a great extent, putting the whole world under fear? Is it truth? Truth should give joy. Hallelujah. Truth should give joy. Truth should give peace of mind. Because the Bible says, by truth, you will be set free. So if you know the purpose of truth, then you will be able to know which is a lie. You will be able to examine and know the lie. What we're showing you here is how to know a lie. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> we're, 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 following us with, we're following us online. All right. Now, lies can come from everywhere. It can come from government. It can come from hospitals. It can come from uh, families. It can come from anywhere. Peter spoke to Christ and says, you will not die. What did Jesus say to him? He says, get ye behind me. Who, who did he say? This is Satan. He said, get ye behind me. Because what he was saying was a lie. Now, to be honest, most majority of every sin you find, just like the other day we talked about the Ten Commandments, majority of every sin you see there is all founded on lies. Adultery, for instance. Why would a man commit or a woman commit adultery? She's lying. The act of being with another man it's already a lie. Do you understand? Because she's already bound to one man. And then she goes for another person, or be it vice versa, the man goes for another person. What happens? You're already living a lie. You know, you could go on further. It's stealing. It's not yours. That's a lie. Covetousness. It's not yours. That's a lie. Hallelujah. God says there are six things he hates. The seventh, yes, he said it's an abomination. The first was pride. Second was what? Lies. Second, lies. May God keep us and protect us from every lie. May God continue to keep us and protect us from every lie of the enemy. Every lie that the enemy has spoken over your lives. Every lie that the enemy has propelled even in your families over the years, we begin to speak against those lies that let the truth of God expose every lie in the mighty name of Jesus. You may have been carrying lies like a handbag, carrying going wherever you are. You may have been carrying lies uh, like your traveling bag. You travel with it. You enter a marriage with lies. You go move around with lies. But today you need to cut off those lies from your lives. For what God has said, he says, if he has made you free, you are free in what? Indeed. So why then do we hold on to who we were? If he has redeemed you, if he has saved you, if he has transformed you, if he has given you his spirit, if he has called you his own, if he has said that no one can take you from his hand, why then would I go and tie myself to a lie? God is not an author of confusion. Hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth. Hallelujah. Hold on to the truth, especially during these days with all that is going on. Uh, I, I, I bet you all know that there is another uh, variant that is moving around again. All right? Uh, they are going through... <laughs> That's why sometimes I don't like to call Jesus Christ Alpha and Omega. 
All right? I know the reason why I'm saying so. Because they're using the Greek alphabet to give the names to this virus. So you hear Delta. Delta is Greek alphabet. It's where you have D. It's D. Now it's Omicron. O, right? That is O. So they are using the Greek. In fact, you will have cult groups named after the Greek alphabet. Omega is a cult group in America. You have, welcome, sir. Omega is a cult group. You have Alpha as, Omega, as cult groups. They're fraternities existing. So, uh, you know, I prefer to look at him as the beginning and the end of the word. Hallelujah. Of course, I know when we say it, we are not aligning to all these. But, but it's just for you to understand and know, Jesus Christ did not speak Greek. Hallelujah. He didn't speak Greek. Not that he doesn't know Greek, but he didn't speak it. He didn't speak it at that time. All right? So he wouldn't have used that letter. Rather, it's translation. All right? It's translation that brought it in. But it's, you know, get to understand. So right now, uh, there is a push for more fear right now. There is a push for more fear. Let us go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Hmm. Hallelujah. I read verse 9 and 10. All right? I could even read that verse 11. From 9 to 11. Psalm 91, verse 9 to 11. It says, Because you have made the Lord, who is my salvation, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Verse 11 says, for he shall give his angels charge over you. Now this is the truth. This is the truth. The Bible says here that no evil shall befall you. He says no plague shall come near you. Do you believe what is, we're singing I believe, I believe. Do we believe what he's saying? Do we believe what the truth is? Do you uphold the truth against any lie that is propelled? Because your only defense against a lie is truth. Your only defense against a lie is truth. Let's go to Psalm 40. Hallelujah. Hmm. Now, I think we'll just do the Psalm 91. So you will go to Psalm 40, but Psalm 91 verse 4. Psalm 91 verse 4. So this is a purpose of truth for our lives. Psalm 91 verse 4. He says, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. And what does he say next? No, Psalm 91 verse 4. Cover you with his feathers. Under the wings you shall take refuge. What does he say again? His truth, your shield and buckler. Do you know what a buckler is? It's a small shield that they use in those days to fight one-on-one. -on -one. If you're fighting one-on-one, -on -one, someone with a knife, you can use the small shield to block yourself. The shield, we already see it as a shield that was used even far back then, even up to this day. They're still using shields. Ask Israel. Israel has a shield over their place. Israelis have a shield over the land to protect against any weapon that comes in. Hallelujah. Especially, yes, uh, rockets. So it's a shield to protect them. So, but he says, I am your shield. He is your shield. 
He is your shield. He says the truth is your shield. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, you will hear about the, the armor of God. All right? It talks about the, sh the, the shield of faith. Why he's calling it faith there is that you have faith in the truth. You have to have faith in the truth. If you do not believe in the truth, it will not protect you. If you do not believe in the truth, it will not protect you. Because he says, without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, it is impossible. Bless you, sir. It is impossible to please God without faith. So I pray that the Father will get us with his faith. He will get us with truth. And that we will walk in his truth to his divine glory. In the mighty name of Yahusha, Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. Now there is a destination for every liar. There is a destination for every liar. There's a destination. Zechariah chapter 5, read from verse 1 to 5. Zechariah chapter 5, from verse 1 to 5. Just read 1 to 4. I'll read 1 to 4. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Now, this is, this is a prophecy. Christ says that every word, every prophecy, and every law must be fulfilled. That it is better for heaven and earth to pass away than any title or any bit of the law or prophecy that should not be fulfilled. So, this is a prophecy. He says, then I turned and raised my eyes, and I saw there a flying, what, scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? So I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits, and its width 10 cubits. Then he said to me, this is the course that goes out over the face of the whole earth. Over the face of the whole earth. He says, every thief shall be expelled according to one side of the scroll. And every perjurer shall be expelled according to the other side. A perjurer is one who lies under oath. Hallelujah. Look at what he says in verse 4. I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. Not demons, though. Do you see this word here? It's not Satan. It's not anyone else. The curse is coming from <laughs> the Most High. He says, it shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears what? Falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it with his timber and stones. Everything concerning that person will be consumed. In fact, you won't be able to pass anything down to any other generation. It will be consumed in that house. Hallelujah. The, 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 the angels flying over in Revelation chapter 14 said something very, very critical. He says, fear God and give glory to him. He says, worship him. The key thing here is, he says, fear God. Fear is wrong. But the song we sang as well, it says, fear God. Fear his wrath. Fear his wrath. The book of Proverbs will talk about the lips of the righteous, all right, will be established. But it says that of those who lie will, will, will come to an end. Hallelujah. It shall not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The Father will protect us from every lie. The issue is that the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So where does your heart lie? Is your heart focused on the truth? Does your heart hunger for the truth? Does your heart seek out the truth? Does your heart uh, call on the truth day and night? Where is your heart? We've been talking about authority and how uh, the Father has empowered us with authority in the Holy Spirit. What protects that authority is truth. Because he is called the spirit of truth. And Christ says he is the spirit of truth and will lead you and guide you in all things. 
Do you trust in the Holy Spirit? Do you trust in the Holy Spirit in not just when we come for fellowship? That we say, Holy Spirit, come and take over. Holy Spirit, take over, take over, take over. After you finish, you say, Holy Spirit, stay there. And you move on. Is that what we do? It should be an everyday affair. It should be your lifestyle. In fact, you, you, you need to trust and hope for the Holy Spirit to guide you in all things. In all things. Because Christ says it. That's the truth. The truth says, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth will guide you in all things. So why then do we ration the things? Hallelujah. Do not ration anything that the Messiah has given unto us. So, you know, quickly, the purpose of truth is to set us free from every captivity. It is to set us free from every captivity. The purpose of truth is to preserve us continually. It is truth that has preserved us for these two years that this whole thing has been going on. And even before the two years, it is truth that, has, that can only preserve, hold on to the truth. The truth is your shield and it's your buckler. Hold on to it. Fasten it every day, day and night. Let it be your shield. Trust in the Father. Call it on him that let your truth go before me this day. Every day you rise up. That should be the first thing you do. Because what are you doing? With the authority that has been given unto you, you consecrate the day with the truth. You consecrate that day. Because the Bible says that it is the most high that will consecrate us. And the spirit, the spirit of truth is the spirit of God. So you consecrate that day. You prayerfully consecrate that day as you move. Even while you are at work. Your work is not separate from the Holy Spirit. He's interested in everything that concerns you. He's interested in your families. He's interested in your finances. He's interested in your work itself. Commit everything to the hand of the Holy Spirit. He says he will lead you in all things. Do not hold tradition over truth. Traditions, sometimes we think they are truth, but they are not truth. Don't hold tradition over truth. You can easily, easily, you know, a brother was telling me the other day and, he, you know, was telling me about certain things he was supposed to do for a burial ceremony and everything. He says, where is it written in the Bible that you should not do this, you should not do that? I said, the, only, the easiest way to examine anything is the truth. Is the truth. For instance, a lady says, my dressing, what's wrong with my dressing? I'm, I'm wearing skimpy stuff. It's not my, God is interested in my heart. It's not about my body. It's my heart. Okay, we say no problem. It's okay. Because it's not written in the Bible that a woman should not wear a skimpy skirt. So you say, okay, no problem. Use the truth. A very simple answer is, what is the purpose of a dress? To cover your nakedness. That's the truth. Now, does this cover the nakedness? The person will give you the answer. The person knows the answer. Do you understand? There are certain things that there are spiritual laws in Scripture that, you know, the Bible says that those who are feeding on milk will still be looking for what is right and what is wrong. But that the spirit of truth, as is dwelling in you, you already will come to know what is truth, what is right. Hallelujah. The truth exposes lies. We've seen that with Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We've seen that there, that truth will expose every lie. So, you see, at David started by saying, the Lord is my, my light and my salvation. Despite the strength of David, David trusted in God to be his light, to be his salvation. And because he, he knew the truth, he understood the truth, the truth helped him and guided him through. That his name is a household name globally. David's name lives even till this date. Now, um, I'll show you what the Holy Spirit can do with you, especially our worshipers. Let's go to Psalm 40. 
Now, it's not just the worshippers. All of us, we are all worshippers. We should be worshipping the Father day and night. He says, uh, this is even the word that comes in Revelation chapter 14. So, uh, Psalm 40, I'll just read a few of these verses. Not just the content, look at the pattern of the words. Not just the content, but the pattern of the words. So I read from verse 1. This is David again. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me. He heard me. He heard my cry. He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. And this, this is what God then did. He says, he has put a new song in my mouth. God put the song in his mouth. God put the song in his mouth. When you submit yourself, God will fill you with praises. Hallelujah. He will fill you with praises. When you give him the glory, don't take any of his glory. So he says, yeah, uh, this is the song. He says, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Verse 4, blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust. And look at what he then says. And has no respect for those who are proud and tell lies. Hallelujah. Many, O oh, oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works. So you can see the praises which you have done and your thoughts. David began to look at the thoughts of God towards him. He says, many are your thoughts towards us. They cannot be counted. They cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. The thoughts of God towards his life. Can you count the thoughts of God towards you? If you can count it, then, then uh, you are not yet come to this position yet. That's why you need to keep counting and just giving him the praise for everything. When we gather here and uh, after the praise, we begin to say, declare, declare, praise him, give him. Let the praise come from your heart, not the words that are written on the wall. But let it come from you. Now, this is what David did. Because he was unable, but he was counting them. He says he cannot even count them enough. In fact, there are so many, but he was just counting and blessing the Father for the great works he has done for him. Then this is what came back to him. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. How did he know? My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. How did he know? He was able to get to the depth of the heart of God. The Bible says you can never know anything of any man except the Spirit reveals it to you. David had the Spirit. Even Saul had the Spirit. But he lost the Spirit. But then look at what he says here. Verse 7. The song changes. The song changes in verse 7. Then I said... Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. This is no more David speaking. This is the Spirit of God testifying of Jesus Christ. Do you understand the pattern? The pattern will guide you in praising and being allowing the Holy Spirit to take over in your life. The pattern you can see clearly was that he submitted and surrendered every praise, glory, everything to God. And in the process, the Bible says, you see, God put a song in his mouth. He began, began to count. He says, Father, I cannot count these things. There are too many things you have done for me. And he began to testify the things that God likes and the things that God hates. And then he testified, testified of the good works, testified of the greatness, testified of the mercy, testified of his favor, testified of his health, testified for the battles that God fought for him. 
David began to testify these things. And while he was testifying it, he began to see the heart of God. Understanding what is the, the sacrifice that God seeks. He saw the sacrifice. He saw the sacrifice of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. That is why such a man could stand and prophesy what Jesus was going to say on the cross. It only takes when you surrender unto him. Wholeheartedly, this is not partial surrendering. David understood this and in the process of declaring the true sacrifice that God seeks, the Holy Spirit began to speak through him. The Holy Spirit spoke through him. He says, then I said, behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is written in my heart. Hallelujah. And David began to go on to say he proclaims it in the assembly. Hallelujah. In these times that we are in, with the challenges that are going on, seek the truth. Eat the truth. Meditate on the truth. Walk by the truth. Lift the truth up. Do not fear. Do not be afraid of what is going on or what they happen. Hold on to the truth. The truth is that which will set you free. The freedom is not just here. The freedom is in his kingdom. That you are granted liberty in his kingdom. So hold on to the truth. Hold on firmly to the truth. Let us pray. We're going to pray. Now you see, whatever lie the enemy has laid for or against you over the years. It may be a mountain of lies. It may be a truckload of lies that he has given you, against you or against your family. It may be a mountain that is so old, that it's not just against you, but even your barangay, your family, your villages, that the lies have piled up so much that those lies are working against you or working against your family. The good thing with the Bible, it says, the truth says that at the presence of God, mountains will melt like what? Wax. At the, at the presence of God, mountains melt like wax. Every mountain must melt. Every mountain that has been set against our lives must melt. This is the truth. The truth is what we should hold on to. That's your belief. That's your strength. That's your protection. You are holy. Holy. Lord, there is none like you. You are holy, holy, holy. Glory to you, Most High. I sing your praises, Father. I sing your praises for it.
we belong in your house. We belong in your presence. We belong in your kingdom. Oh, we do not delight in the world, Father. We do not delight in the world. But we delight in your presence, Father. Father, we receive your presence, Father. Submit all unto him. Submit yourself unto the Most High. Just begin to declare and say, Father, have your way in my life. Let your spirit have its way in my life. Not just when we gather here, but every day of our lives. Let your spirit, the spirit of truth, teach us in all things. Father, we surrender our minds. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our hands. We surrender our families. We surrender our work. We surrender our feet. We surrender everything that concerns us unto you that you have your way. Let the spirit of truth have its way. Let the spirit of truth have its way, Father. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says that the word of God is truth. The word of God is truth. And they are said that it is word not like fire. Yes, he said through his servant uh, Jeremiah that his word is like an axe. His word is fire. We're going to pray that let the fire of God come on every mountain of lie against our lives. Every mountain of lie that have been perpetrated over the years. Every mountain of lie over our life, our health. Every mountain of lies over our families. Every mountain of lies over our employment. Every mountain of lie against our barren guys. Every mountain of lie. Receive the fire of God. 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 You cannot stand the fire of God. Oh, every mountain. He said to say, oh, Zerubbabel, which mountain can stand against you? Oh, Most High, let your fire come. Let it come, let it come, let it come. On every mountain of lie against our lives. Lies that have been said even of who we were. It shall come to an end this day. Every lie that is a chain be broken. Melt away by the fire of God. For the fire is in the Messiah, Yahusha, Jesus the Christ. Father, let every fire come from heaven over every mountain, every chain, every lie that has been perpetrated. Hallelujah. Remember, the, the, the weapon of Satan is lies. And that weapon is still what is using today. The Bible says that the armor of God, that we should gird ourselves with the armor of God. It says in all things that truth holds forth your righteous, the righteousness of God in you. Truth. And that shield, which we call the shield of faith, we have seen here in Psalm 40, that is truth. Truth. You have faith in the truth. Hallelujah.